TV. Uncle Mark. Uncle Mark. Total, Total Media. Media. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to UMTV. Today we have, whew, well, this, this young man wears so many hats. Let me see. We have an extraordinary young man, a legendary man in the house today. We have Mr. Terry T., Mr. Community. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, anytime. So now there's so much that we need to cover. Uh, we're going to start at the beginning. We're going to go all the way back to the day of DJ. And mm. um, let's talk back in the day and let's bring it up to producing. Okay. I would, 1981, I was 11 years old, first pair of turntables, Technic 1200 turntables. I looked up to New York hip hop at the time, was Cool Herc, uh, Grandmaster Flash, uh, Curtis Blow. 11 years old, you can do much. I was only in the, what, fifth grade? <laughs> fifth grade, so I'm DJing house parties, uh, DJing uh, proms, anything that it took, you know, all that while playing still music and sports. I would say that that was my beginning. Mm -hmm. Awesome, okay, so 11 years old, and we're mixing on turntables and everything. How did you know what the, the older folks wanted to listen to, the, the teenagers? I don't know. God touched me, and whatever <laughs> I go, the energy just translates. A lot from just listening to records that um, my brothers, sisters had. Um, elementary school. My dad is a um, is a youth baseball president and coach of like fifty years. So I grew up on watching my elders. My elders back then was people actually in high school. So I already knew what everybody was relating to. Man, mind you, when you eleven, yeah, I'm, I'm not playing with toys. I'm playing with the big boys. So yeah, you just know. You just know. Okay, so you also are an artist in your own right. So let's talk about Terry T, the artist. Well, I started with my cousin MCN and a guy named Ant Banks that most people know now for producing Too Short, but that's my childhood group. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> so back then, it was three of us, me, my cousin MC Ant, and then a guy named Ant Banks. Unfortunately, we were teenagers. Um, the world didn't know what they were doing. I put together a marketing plan. We was in 36 days. We were 16 years old. And from that album, a struggling guy named John Singleton shot our first video. It was amazing. And um, later on, we sold about 100,000 independently back then. That's like going triple platinum now. And um, MC Annie got killed, gun violence. And from there, me and Ed Banks had to figure out where we was going to go from there. And unfortunately, RIP MC Annie. Yep. Wow. All right, so what what drove you to keep pushing forward from the young age? Because, you know, sometimes it starts off, you're doing things when you're young, and as you go into your late teens, adulthood, uh, life happens and you just can't pursue it. So what gave you that push to keep pursuing? Because it wasn't over. Life is an elevator. I'm going to get to the penthouse. Just drop drop things off as you go and you get there. You know, when you, uh, my whole life was music, sports, and community. That doesn't change for anybody. When we're doing things back then, we don't know how it's going to pan out. We just know we're special in Oakland, California. Uh, we had a lot of good people come out of there, but we like to say per capita, we're very special with Oakland, with, you know, with music, sports. So if it makes sense back then, you're guided. I was just guided through faith back then. We, we, don't, we don't worry about outcomes. We take the edge off of everything. We just do what we feel, how we feel. Um, we, we don't try and move the needle, we are the needle. That's the confidence that we had to have back then. Especially when you're dealing with New York that's running it. You couldn't even get on the, they gonna boo you at the Apollo stage before you even say your name <laughs> back then. So you have to understand the confidence that I have to have that I still carry with me today um, that stood me, stood me about back then. All right, so now we've come through the DJ process as an artist, what did you enjoy most about being an artist and working with um, something so, like an opportunity of the Sons of Soul album? Well, two stories. So Raphael, you guys know him as Raphael Sadiq now. He gives me a call and the Tony, Tony, Tony was just transitioning from their second album of producing their own album, which was the Sons of Soul album, which later becomes Anniversary, Lay Your Head on My Pillow. Raphael gives me a call. 
He said, listen, Terry T, come down here, man. Just come down here with me. We're about to start this album, bring that hip hop flavor to what we're doing. That's how I became a protege of Tony, 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 starting with uh, Raphael Sadiq. Now also, working with the Tonys, that's one thing, but there's a young lady that you also started off, and I, I, I think young people, old people, everybody kind of knows that uh, young lady. Could you kind of talk to us about that a little bit? Well, well to get, before I get to her and many others, I transitioned from the Tony Tony, the album, to a gentleman named Dwayne Wiggins, the founder of Tony Tony. He had a company, was just starting it off, and he comes to me as a partner and says, I would like for you to be a part of this company. So he starts his own company called Grassroots Entertainment. It's just me and him. From that, um, we signed a group named Girls Time that was Destiny's Child that turns into Beyonce in 94. So we got Destiny's Child. So I helped develop them at 14 years old, first three albums. A young lady uh, at the time was in our studio. Her name was Keisha Cole. We had her. We had a, a young lady named Alicia Keys. She was 17. Worked with her. A young lady named India Irie. Um, a young lady that's out now, her name is Her. Gabby Wilson, um, she was with us as well. Um, a young lady named Ke uh, Kehlani, a little later, uh, she was with us. I also worked with Jamie Foxx. Yeah, so I was, again, I was just an engine to the good looking car. You have to understand that when you working with Tony Tony, I'm just kind of like that, that teacher and um, coach that you pull for where everybody knows because I'm in the credits, but the world is not trained really to acknowledge me or celebrate me because I'm in the credits and I'm doing all of the dirty work. Ah. I raise them, you praise them. That's ah, how I look at it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I I didn't get to use that. I was going to use the engine to the good-looking car, and I missed that part. But I like that. That's yeah. always that's always good. Uh, you have been really, really blessed, and you have worked with people that just one name out of the group that you've mentioned, people would just be like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. How do you... How do you not let the uh, who you're working with affect you uh, as, as far as what you're doing with your your product? And, you know, do you look at them as in, OK, you are you're Beyonce, but you are going to learn this and you you go that way. Or have you ever gotten starstruck? How could you? Because you're developing it. I know. That's like you're getting starstruck for your children. See, when you build something, when, when you build something, see, and, and this is my model is that I never hop on the bandwagon, I build the tracks. So if you notice everything that I was a part of, I helped build it. It's, 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 if anything, I put the energy on them. Remember, they're 14, they're 17. How, people, don't, people don't understand that when um, Destiny Out got their deal through Grassroots, it took us two years. We moved them to Oakland, California. So we're walking around high school with barrettes and no, I'm, I'm in the real development phase. See, so what I do is I would say what offset me, and we'll get to that, is um, my family has a legacy of 80 years in a community. So I'm not looked at as a music producer. I'm looked at as a, as a, as a whole person. So if anything, when they leave me, they know that they're going to be raised if they need to. I support them in areas that they need to. But I'm real tough love. That's what gets me through, is that I speak what needs to be said. Um... I produce you how you need to be produced. I don't cater nobody but God, and and that comes across very, very well. If they can get through my boot camp phase, they're they're going to be successful. Period. And it's not just me. It's a it's a lot of people that's touched these people. But I will say, parents, teachers, coaches, essential workers, look at me as one of those just to the music industry. You know what I mean? It's it's that simple. I do not look the part. Um, um, but people are trained to be a groupie to what the part looks like. TV, um, jewelry, I had that too. But I would put my donkey ropes in the trunk and go co coast that next young girl and put 100 in the college. So I used, to, I used to challenge the music industry and say, money ain't nothing if your soul ain't worth a dime. Copyright that one too. <laughs> that is awesome. All right, we're going to go to a brief break, and we're going to come back with more of the legendary Mr. Terry T., Mr. Community. Appreciate it. Uncle Mario Total Media is now in the metaverse, and we can bring you in, too. Bring your business presence into the metaverse. Let us show you how. Buying virtual real estate, we, we got, got you. you. Setting up virtual stores, we, we got, got you. you. 
customized graphics for the metaverse. We got you. Tying your businesses with your Instagram, Facebook, and other social media platforms. We got you. And much, much more. The The metaverse metaverse and and the real world. Let us show you how to tie them together. Get in now before they drag you in behind. And welcome back to UMTV. And today, Mr. Terry T, Mr. Community. So I know you hear me say, Mr. Terry T, Mr. Community. We're going to get to that. And first I want to say, you know, I met Mr. Terry T through Bip Roberts. And they had a program they were working. And um, Bip Roberts, baseball player, he was saying, oh, I need you to meet this young man because he's doing a lot of things in the community. And I was like, sure, you know, okay, yeah. And so... When I met him, a wealth of knowledge, I mean, just a wealth of knowledge. And so we've talked, and and we do talk often in regards to this next project that we're going to talk about. And so I would like to ask you, how did you come up with Youth Sports Nation? And first and foremost, how did Mr. Community become the mascot for that? Uh. All right, true story. Everything I say is true. So I'm with a group named Tony Tony, because here we go. I'm the music producer, writer, and I'm the only person that they trust. So they fired a road manager. Next year, I'm the road manager, because I used to wake up the road manager, because I didn't do no drugs. I was focused. And next you know, I'm the uh, band director. I'm just everything at this point for the Tonys. But the part I didn't leave out was everybody was Hollywood I was community good so I was always a direct service coach I was always just grounded 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 and about five six years ago I had two parts to why I created Mr. Community one was social media distractions with children two corporate exploitation um, and their marketing violence sex money and drugs to children I had a problem with that because it used to be when you had a party, your parents was in the front room and the kids was in the little room. Now the kids go from the little room to the big room, which is inappropriate. So two parts of that. I'm on stage with Tony Tony, and one night when I was supposed to rap feels good part, feels good, and do the rap, I started talking about the community, right? I was also on tour with uh, members of New Edition, Ralph Bobby, Bobby Brown and, and, and Johnny Gill, and it was Bobby Brown that told me, he said, man, you are my Mr. Community. Then I got a best best friend, childhood friend named um, Lil D, Daryl Lil D Reed, and I um, did about 20 years, and I used to go see him in the feds. And he told me, he said, you, you've always built everybody else in, 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 in the world. Build yourself. And I was like, how can I do that? He said, become Mr. Community. So I literally walked off the stage on my own terms, on good terms with everybody, and built this character called Mr. Community, something that we don't have, a modern-day Mr. Rogers with swag like the street Sesame Streets we never had. And I put a five-year plan together and started, not over, but built literally Mr. Community. So now parents, teachers, coaches would have a, a, a trusting model. When I see all these mascots out there, when I see people that's um, selling, selling these negative messages to children, I knew that if I produced myself, like every other person, a couple of reasons, I could control the narrative. Two, it's really me. That was my starting point. How I get the youth sports nation is I'm at a baseball field and it's a guy named Ricky Henderson. He's really, really good. Hall of Famer, big time. And a kid walks up to him and said, who are you? I heard you was fast. Then I was at the baseball field and I'm with a parent and, and a, I was with a parent and, and the coach brings a kid over and a professional football player comes to the field. The kid asked the kid, I want to say it right. The kid asked the football player for an autograph and the coach sarcastically said, what about me? What about my autograph? The kid turned around to him at seven years old and said, you ain't nobody, you ain't no superstar, you ain't on TV. Coach looked at me and said, Terry T, we need to do something. See, so everything I do, I listen to the community. The community makes me, I don't make the community, and I serve them. So then I said that um, professional athletes and entertainers are not acknowledged. We have no equity. These guys are Hall of Famers. These guys are this, and I'm that, and I walk in the room, and my son, you should know me, but in the African-American community, we have not done a great job at selling our history and letting these youngsters know where they come from. So I knew that I would be that bridge through God to bring history back 
to bring positive messaging back and bring equity, equity back through community and economic development. Let's talk about what you do in the schools, what you do with the children. You have a, a grandpa figure that's with you as well, very prominent, that works with you. So can we kind of just summarize your, your program, please? So you Sports Nation, we support public and educational systems. So there's tiers to any city that moves around, and that's all strategy with me. So wherever you go, you have school districts, you have park and recreation systems, you have youth sports organizations, you have your professional sports teams, you have dioceses, right? So I work with all of them. So what I did was is prove to my friends that Mr. Community can be at a stadium and sign autographs for 10,000 children without selling violence, sex, money, and drugs. What I did was is produce the same music, but now it's get your education. Now I call my friend, you know him as Lenny Williams, formerly a Tower of Power. He's singing Love Your Parents, like a We Are The World project all over again. And now how the legends get involved with me is, I take a, um, back then, uh, Bill Russell, RIP, or Joe Morgan, that endorses it and I created Youth Sports Nation. So now we're athletes and entertainers, and I put together the structure, almost like a union. I put together the structure. Now the guys are able to come in my area where I'm Mr. Community, I'm fired up, you fired up, yeah, I'm teaching values. And now it increases parent engagement because the parents have grown up on a Bip Roberts, on a Lenny Williams. It's, it's a perfect match. And I only say that because I'm proud because um, traditionally, a lot of people know when to call us when there's a campaign. Uh, when you're doing a Super Bowl, who do you call? Entertain. When you're running a campaign, when, you're, when you need an autograph, when you need memorabilia, who do you call? You call the entertainer. I want to make sure that I put a uh, structure to it so I can look them in the eye and say, we're here too, we want in, and that's, that's how it got started. So we've mobilized and engaged about a million families. Um, I still serve about 10,000 youth directly, and it's cross sport, in schools, in counties, I'm in county fairs, I'm, I'm everywhere. Yes, ma'am. All right, so I wanna take a brief break, and then I wanna come back and I wanna talk more youth sports Nation. What's up? And welcome back to UMTV and today the talented and legendary Mr. Terry T, Mr. Community. Now, before we go any further, I wanted to kind of finish up with the Youth Sports Nation. All right. And so this is a program for young people. You you oh, are oh, uh, everybody. For everyone. So it's youth, respective parents and elders are my fans. Some of my fans are five, some are literally ninety five. Yeah, okay. I just want to throw that out there. All right. And this is a community organization. Goals. I know we have goals. Goals and meanings behind those goals that you have. Right. So my first goal was is to set a three- to five-year plan, and I had to checkbox everything. Sat down with John Madden and the guys. They would say, you go penetrate. You go penetrate public educational systems as an LLC. Look them in the eye. Make, make them respect you, make them pay you, make, make the, so I've done that, so five years. So now I'm turning the curve on five years. My goal is just to scale Mr. Community. He needs to be global now, see? Proof of concept regionally, done, check the boxes, done, and I treated myself like every other person I produce. Same blueprint, I just put myself through it. Hmm? All right. You have parents yelling for, um, Lenny Williams, but you have children yelling for Grandpa Williams. So you merge that beautifully where the parents want to come because they want the kids to go, but they really need to go. So that, that was brilliant in Thank merging you. that. Uh, some of the celebrities that you work with, you work with tons of celebrities. Uh, can you give me an example of a typical day in trying to... Uh, well, you're a celebrity, so how? Right, right, so right. How, we how, have a locker room. We you know, have a locker so room. How, yeah, so you know, celebrity to celebrity, how do you uh, have a typical day with, say, uh, the Alicia Keys or the or Jamie Fox? It, it depends on the project. Alicia Keys, what we call one-offs. They send her down from New York. We work with her. We do what we can. She's a one-off. Destiny's Child was two years. We move them, still have report cards, homeschool them, develop them. Um, people don't know Beyonce has to wake up every single day and be on a schedule and, and take opera lessons, take lessons, lessons, lessons. So the days vary based on the artist you would name. Wow. Mm -hmm. Development is different from uh, scope of services. Somebody calls us and say, we have a young lady, um, we're talking to you from Motown, her name is Indy Irie. 
young lady with a gu guitar. We want you to work with her for two weeks. Or Karen White says, I love the Tonys. I'm going to move across the street from you, and I'm going to work with you. I'm going to make sure I work with you. And then we have a Keisha Cole. Well, we may develop you, but we may not get you the deal. You know, I was big bro. I tell her, go to L.A., get your deal. She means Damien Elliott. Next thing you know, she's Keisha Cole. They all have different stories. So if you give me the artist, I would tell you that story, but the, it varies so much. Now, Jamie Foxx, interesting story. My father is the mecca of baseball in the community. He coaches everybody. I watched my father drive around in the El Camino truck. He used to drive around and I didn't know what he was doing. He used to just take black boys, put them in the back of his truck, take them to the baseball field and give them a glove. One of those kids that he mentored was called Marcus King, which is Jamie Foxx's manager. You ever saw the King Towers, the Jamie Foxx King Tower? That guy Marcus King played for my dad, who I've been knowing since he was five. So my father was his second father, which becomes Jamie Foxx's manager. So next time I work with Jamie Foxx in 1993. Wow. Living color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you notice, I'm always there from the beginning, regardless of what they become. Jamie Foxx is the most nicest, humblest man you will ever meet. You talk about work ethic, goes to a movie, come back, get in the studio, nothing but family around. Nothing but family around. Very talented in music. He's very underrated in music. He did get his album off, he done very well, but he is one, he's just one of the best human beings I've been around. Wow. Yeah. A, lot of people don't, a lot of people don't know that about him. They see what they see, but I know what I know, and he is the most nicest, talented, multi-talented, best human beings I've ever been around. Wow. Him and Bobby Brown from New Edition. Well, now see, now Bobby would have the bad boy image kind of thing going. And so, you Bobby know. Brown is, is a person like me. He grew up in his environment of inner city and there's a lot of things that people underestimate that goes on in the inner city during our days. And Bobby Brown, along with uh, uh, Alicia, Bobby Brown is one of his most nicest people you'll ever meet but he reminds me of myself differently he moves to his own beat and people like us you don't try and control us i learned this you with talent you have to develop it and you have to share it you cannot get in the way so people like him whether it's him kanye whatever i'm just telling you it's people that's trying to control them they have their own way of doing things it may not be popular on how they want to do it but it's not for us to judge them internally Bobby Brown, the most, most nicest, generous people you'll ever meet, and he's real. Yeah. What, what do you see as the biggest difference from artists of, as you started in 1981, up to modern day today, what do you find is the biggest difference in the artists it's themselves? Okay, so there's two parts to it. The positive thing is the new generation have opportunity that we never had. We never had internet. We never, um, now you can kind of manipulate your way a little bit through society because we had to do house parties and go through a, what you call a protocol. Now the new generations is actually the whole record company because they're their own marketers. They're their own developers. Now, um, so, so the younger generation is economically gonna do way, way better. Kind of like Bill Russell, he has 11 championships, probably never made more than $100,000 a year, but he still hands that trophy to LeBron James. So I treat the young generation like that. I'm just handing a trophy to you, um, and I mentor a lot of them behind the scenes because they don't have what we have. Right. And we don't have what they have. So I like to learn. I would say, to, I would say that they're a lot more forward thinking, but they're a lot more reliable on the same things we never had to rely on. So do you think that the new generation um, do you think they have the same value that the old school had because it came to them so much easier? Absolutely not. It's impossible to have values when you've given some. If somebody would have handed me the internet back then, I wouldn't have the same values. Just speaking the truth, it's no way in the world because it's too easy. You can get a computer for $200 and do a Lisa B and be a star. That was impossible. Our budgets was $500,000. You had to go through a process. So there's two edges to every sword. Excellent. Yeah, that's the truth. Excellent. You know, they just, right. They're going to make quicker money. But we believe in more is not better, better is better. Quality over quantity. The, the biggest artist that ever lived to do it, and what I believe in is 
You let, every, you let everybody run a sprint and you run a marathon. I think we live in a world where people are so insecure that they have to post every two seconds. They have to um, block their insecurities by showing you things or cutting and pasting somebody else's situation or whatever. It's all over the place. Now, now the youngsters, I don't mind, but the social media distractions can become a problem when a kid is six years old. And then a kid is saying, instead of being a doctor or a lawyer, I want to be an influencer. I think that could be a problem. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. I think they're too young for that. I don't think it's age appropriate. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so before we go to our, our final segment, what is one piece of advice you would give to someone that wanted to come into the industry um, and this would be like a, a very pertinent piece of advice that they need? Well, I could tell you one thing that worked for everybody who I mentor is let it choose you, don't choose it. Okay. Yeah. All right. A, a lot of people force themselves to be something they weren't meant to be. And the world knows it because it's not authentic, which means that you may eat a little great, but I like eating part of the watermelon is much bigger. Um, you, It doesn't matter. You, Even the devil can give you some opportunity, some money. It's what do you risk and what are you willing to sell to get the opportunity? So what? Are, so excuse me, what do you value? See, I never value revenue and recognition. So I would say, don't value revenue and recognition. Value what you are here to do and follow that pathway and be willing to, to do what we did. We never follow trends. We were the trend. I think that's one thing that is missing. I think that's the one thing that I, the youngsters love me for telling them this. And, and a lot of them actually rethink what they're doing. Because still, oh, only 0.1% is still going to make it, no matter how you shape it. Some people are just going to die in between. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's deep. That's okay. Deep enough, it's we're going to go to a break. It's real. <laughs> yes, it is. It definitely is. Uh, we're going to go to a brief break, and then we're going to come back with more of Mr. Terry T, Mr. Community. UMTV. Uncle Mario. Uncle Mario. Total, Total Media. Media. And welcome back to UMTV. And today, our special guest, Mr. Community, Terry T. So, during the break, um, you know, we had a few questions and we didn't finish all the questions, but I know you think, wow, it's just the two of them here. It is, sort of, maybe. But before we go into our conclusion, uh, what was the question? Uh, one of my questions were, is there anything that you want to clear up that has been mistaken by, like, the public when it comes to, like, how music's being produced or how, like, the business works? Clear up. So when you say clear up how it works, I think I think there's no misinterpretation how it works. You know, I, I think it's no misinterpretation how it works. I think it works how it works and it should work how it works. I don't think I don't think that we should penalize you guys because you have resources. I just think that you guys should show respect to your elders. And who paved the way because there would be no revenue generated if Sugar Hill Records was not created. Now, now you, you go to other cultures, they understand who their heroes are. And it just seems like when we get to specifically the African-American community, and, and I'm going to tell you one executive told me this. He said, what's the difference between other cultures, their legends, African-Americans are has-beens? Because you replace them, you're not committed to them. It's the only thing that I would touch on in terms of probably the most misunderstood person to the public based on the material he makes is my friend Too Short. Yeah. Okay, so now I want to kind of go to a different direction. I, I want to give you this segment to be able to do um, what you would like to in regards of telling us anything that we haven't covered. However, I want to talk Hip Hop Alliance's Youth Sports Nation. Okay, so Hip Hop Alliance, um, Hip Hop Alliance is the first ever unionized, um, unionized platform for hip hop. So it was founded by, just example, not all, but Chuck D, KRS One, and my mentor, his name is Curtis Blow. So um, Grandmaster Melly Mel himself, I ran into him while I was with the Tonys on the cruise. He saw Mr. Community about three, four years ago. I get a call from Melly Mel. He said, Terry T, I said, what's up, huh? He said, it's time. He said, what? They have started this Hip Hop Alliance. It's a movement. You already have a model, and we feel as though that um, you can help us benefit specifically through community engagement. So they, they just 
not too long ago appointed me to the National Advisory Board, Curtis Blow himself. So that's that's an honor. Yeah. So now I know both programs. I know Youth Sports Nation and I know Hip Hop Alliance. Uh -huh. um, I talked with Curtis and, and his crew as well. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant uh -huh. idea. Um, I want you to take this time and just tell the viewers what you want them to know uh, in regards to yourself, Mr. Community, your programs, uh, the merging of the Hip Hop Alliance and Mr. Community and, Mr. Community, and just uh, in your own words, I want you to, to finish us out and tell us what you want us to know. Well, okay. Well, I, in terms of who Terry T. Mr. Community is, he's just a, a, a just just a genuine good person that has walked a, walked many many miles in a good way, and I am structured. I restructured myself to serve where I come from, the people, specifically parents, teachers, coaches, essential workers, and then all of the the people who I've worked with, music and sports, um, be a trust and bridge to all cultures and generations. That's what I would say who Terry T. Mr. Community is. The rest is to be continued with God. Uh, it doesn't matter where I know where I'm going in terms of how do I specifically align with Hip Hop Alliance. You have two different versions. You have what they see and you have what I see and then the third one would be is what we'll see. We're still in talks. Um, they look at me like a community mascot um, because what I just did with U Sports Nation I'm gonna give my life existence to Hip Hop Alliance because hip hop and helping children literally saved my lives, my life. So that's paying my tithes to my to my elders and the forefathers that that made up this thing called hip hop. Yes, that's that's what I will say. I will finish with I want to give props to Too Short, my friend Todd Shaw. Not the most colorful lyrics that, but but we're so close. Um, Oakland just did a street naming after him, right at my old alma mater, my high school, and so Too Short just got a whole like street named after him. Um, me and him are able to coexist because again, we all walk different pathways, but we all come together again for the people. So I did want to give props out to uh, Ty Shaw. Y'all know him as Too Short, one of the most nicest people you and fairest businessman you'll ever meet. Well, I, I just want to say that I greatly appreciate getting this opportunity to actually sit face to face as opposed to just over the radio and, and, and talking that way. Um, it, it, I appreciate you taking your time to come out and do this with me. I also want to let you close out the show with whatever advice or words that you want to give and I hope that we get an opportunity. We talk all the time, so I hope we get another opportunity to do a show like this because it's very informative. And, you know, people get a chance to see and hear things that you can't read right, um, in right. social media, and, and you get it from the horse's mouth, you know? So I appreciate the clarity in the things that you've said and the encouragement and the words that you've said. So with that being said from me, uh, as we close out, I give you the closing words. Well, I don't do a lot of public interviews for a reason, is that I have a vault of information that's been between me and God for a long time. Um, but it was little, little D, Daryl Reed, that said, nah, T, you got to start talking now. You know, So I've opened my mouth up now, and they're going to hear me, and the world going to feel me, and they're going to use me in a positive way. Um, I would tell people, don't let people mislead you. The hood is a scam. People are a scam. Don't let people say you can be anything you want to be. No, you can't. It's not true. It's impossible. Okay. Certain people are made to do certain things and God touched them. If you can slow down and listen to him and walk through faith and know your first mind, know what you're capable of doing. I will leave by saying this. You have to have a root before you can develop your branches to the tree. A lot of people are scattered. They're all over the place and don't even know what their root is. Once you develop a root to who you are, what you can do, if you ride it out and you're patient, but I'm gonna say this one thing, you have to have talent or you have to be able to be a professional manipulator, one of the two. 
okay? If you want to put your giraffe and put some shoes on and hit a couple of flip-flops in your videos, you can make it that way too, but that's not making it. You have to have talent in what you're trying to do and you have to be the best in the world, not the best on your block, not the best in the city. You have to be the best in the world. Only 0.1% makes it, makes it. Please consider that if you want wealth and you want sustainability, which means that we will know about you like Tony Tony, anniversary plays 30 years, 20 years. So I will ask you, what are you looking for? If you're looking for long-term stability, I'm a vault. If you're looking for a quick come up, if you're looking for a hustle, you're gonna do just like breaks, that's grinding. You're gonna wear down, you're not gonna uh, sustain it, gonna make it quick money. So I let people pick their choice. I don't decide it for anybody. And I, I, I can leave with that. It's awesome. I can leave with that. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I look forward to getting a chance to talk to you again soon. I'm in your life forever. It's no curfew on Karen. And I, and I, and I, and I really uh, believe that. But people do know, don't talk to me unless you, unless you, unless your head on right. Yeah. And thank you for watching UMTV. We'll see you again as soon. UMTV. Uncle Mark. Total, Total. Media.